until they got sick of you. And that's what Bob Picardo did. And I, I, like I said, I tried. I kept telling them, more comedy, more comedy on this show. Because if you watch the original series, part of the enjoyment of watching the original series is watching the witty banter amongst the characters. You know, at the end of the show, you need a little bit of comedic levity to balance out the fact that the ship is going to be imploded, it will implode every episode, right? So I kept telling them, why don't you utilize the comedic talents of the actors on this show? Because I honestly believe, I've told people this, if there was a camera that was running in between takes on the bridge, if they just filmed us interacting with each other, goofing off, that it would be the number one sitcom in the world if they were able to publish that. Because each person is hilarious. Robbie McNeil, hilarious in real life. Even Janeway, hilarious. I remember one day, we used to play this game where we would throw, um, we would make tape balls out of electrician's tape, these heavy tape balls. This would be Tim Russ, myself, and Robbie McNeil. And we'd try to hit each other with them while we were on the bridge, right? So we just like, we'd throw them at each other. And one day I was trying to hit Tim, and I'm not a very good, I'd never make it in baseball, but I'm not a very good thrower. My aim is off. My targeting sensors are off. So as I had this, as I had this tape ball, and I'm trying to hit Tupac, and as I threw it, 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 it was like a curveball, and it hit Janeway in the back of the head, right? <laughs> and, I, and immediately, here's my console, I, I, when it hit her head, I went, <gasps> I just ducked down, really. And I go, oh my god, I'm gonna get so fired, I'm gonna get so fired. And so then I wait for a minute, and I, as I pop up like that, I pop up to see Kate standing there waiting for me. <laughs> she throws it right back, you know? So the sense of humor, the, the camaraderie that we had was amazing, and I always begged the producers to show that on camera. Um, and if you guys ever get a chance to see all the Voyager cast together on stage, that would be something to really, really, really come to because um, uh, for those of you who made Calgary the TNG evening, I, I think that our crew is even more bonded than, than that, to be honest. So, um, like I said, we had an awesome time, an awesome time on set. So, what was your favorite awesome time? What was your most awesome time on set? Um, probably when. Oh God, there's so many. There's so many things. It's very difficult to come up with a, a specific thing. Um, um, I, me being the youngest, the most mischievous of all, I came up with a lot of things. I invented the combat toss. Our combat badges were attached to our uniform by Velcro, right? So it was a little piece of plastic painted silver, and there was Velcro on each side. So one day, I walked up to Robbie McNeil, and I ripped it off of his suit. And he's like, hey! I go, wait, 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 hold on. I step back and I threw it and it stuck back on. <laughs> so then we started practicing about how far away we could get and throw it back and forth. And even Jane was like, no, 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 let me try it. So she goes, ah, the captain. So she, she got into it too. So that was fun. And then the other, I think the other time that was matching the combat toss in terms of favorite times on the bridge, um, Kate being uh, Irish-American, I decided to tribute of her Irish cultural background to uh, perform the river dance in front of her. So I got I got Tom, Paris, and Chicote. So the three of us were standing in front of Kate, just doing her little river dance. I mean, it was the most retarded thing ever, but it was so funny because she was just laughing. She her face turned red. So just jumping up and down doing river dance in front of Kate. That's a, that's a nice memory. Can I do the river dance? I'm not going to do it here. No. <laughs> Give you a little bit of it. That's a, that's enough. Thanks. Um, now there's a question over there. Yes, female question. <laughs> Hello, young lady. Hello. Um, my husband and I have kind of a running joke when we watch Voyager that if anything bad is going to happen, it's going to Could happen it? to Harry. To Kim. Kim. Yes. You know, the love STD or you know. All that. <laughs> <laughs> so I, my question is, when you're getting the script and you read this, you're like, oh great, it's Harry. So, how do you, what do you feel about that? Uh, about being everything happening to, to me? Yeah. Um, it's funny you should mention that. Another fan came to me at a convention and he said that there's the, uh, oh my gosh, it's something about the, the Harry Kim factor. Like, if you're, if you're close to Kim, there's something crazy is going to happen, you know. But, um, yeah, I mean, being the punching bag on Voyager was, was, it got old really quickly for me, you know, because I, I kept going, why does it have to be me, you know? And so many times when the other actors got to do cool things, like there was an episode where everyone went down to Earth and they got to wear normal clothes. Who was on the ship? Kim, okay? 
then there's the other episode where the Herojin take over and use Voyager as a, this one big holodeck training simulation. And everyone got to wear, you know, Paris and, and Chakotay got to wear World War II uniforms. Uh, Neelix got to play a Klingon, he got the Klingon garb. And, and what does Kim do? He's modulating some sensors. You know, it's like, yeah! You know, so yeah, it was just constant, uh, but I got used to it. I realized that was it. Kim was going to be the punching bag, he was going to be the guy that, and uh, literally, Kim was the first Voyager character to die and come back to life, right? So everything did happen to Kim. So it became status quo. So anytime anything bad happened, I'm reading the script, oh, I bet you I'm going to die here. Yeah, sure enough, I died. <laughs> but he came back to life, which is a good thing. Um, and Kim never could find the right girl. Kim was always just one, you know, Kim fell in love with the, the, the dead girl, the uh, holodeck character, the... The wrong twin, the the yeah, it's nonstop, you know, and it was just it just became status quo. So I got used to it after a while. Um, I think in another another lifetime, Kim's karma will be a lot better, probably. So, yeah. Another question back there? Go up here. Up here in the back. There. Hey, um, yeah, just along the, the discussion of Harry King being Jack throughout the entire uh, series of Voyager. A lot of the lines of relationships with Seven of Nine. I mean, that's just another thing where it seemed at one point Harry oh was going to hook up with her, yes. and then it doesn't happen, and then Chakotay gets her at the end. So I was just wondering, why did Harry not step up there? Like, <laughs> <laughs> every episode where I see Harry King getting jacked or getting told what to do, just come on, Harry, step up. Those writers will burn in hell. <laughs> that episode where Kim invites Seven of Nine down to the mess hall under the guise of work, right? So Kim's trying to make his move, right? The lighting is lower, everything is, you know, and Seven of Nine comes in and she calls him on it. Like she, she says, like, uh, she goes, your, your pupils are dilated, you know, and so then she asks Kim, she goes, do you, do you wish to copulate, right? And when I'm reading this as an actor, I'm thinking, oh, yeah, yeah. And then I see Kim's response. No. And I'm scanning through the script going, where does he say just kidding? Where does he say just, just kidding? Just kidding. Just kidding. He doesn't get anything from Seven. I remember when we went to that, I was so upset. I, I went to the uh, I went to, to set that day to film that scene. And after the scene was over, the director yells, cut. Jerry Ryan looks at me and she goes, you lost out. <laughs> Then she turns to the crew and says, any takers? And of course, oh, 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 oh. cameraman, the sound guy, they're like, what? Well, it's a kid's too much of a weenie. <laughs> yeah, so that was difficult. I mean, I, I, I could not believe that the writers put me in that, that spot. And then they started having weird romance, and they tried to pair Seven of Nine with uh, Chakotay, with the doctor. Remember the doctor? The doctor had a romance with Seven of Seven, right? How is that possible? The doctor is Microsoft Windows, okay? <laughs> what kind of love is going to germinate from that? That's ridiculous. So, again, I pitched an idea to the writers. I said, okay, you want to do this whole doctor in love with seven thing? Let's do a bizarre love triangle, right? Let's do a funny thing where the doctor walks up and he's like, hello, seven, I have some roses for you. And then Kim pops his head around the corner and says, turn off EMH. Like that. I catch the roses, like, hello, seven, roses for you. So we could have done little funny things like that, but... I didn't call enough, like Bob, you know, I should have kept calling him and pushed him towards that. But it's a sad, sad day when Ensign Kim turned down 7 of 9 for a little, so, you know, it's really nice. Thank you for bringing up that painful memory. Okay. Yeah, we have another question over the back there, please. Thank you. Yes, sir. Um, I'm wondering actually more about uh, makeup nightmares. Like any situations that came up with uh, particular scenes where there's extra makeup involved? Well, you know, we didn't have, for us human characters, and this is always funny, when I meet strangers and I tell them I worked on Star Trek, they always say, Oh, did you have all those bumps on your head? And, I, and my best, my, my, the answer which always cracks me up is I say, No, I, I played human on TV. <laughs> I played human on TV. Um, so we didn't have a lot of makeup. Kim didn't have a lot of makeup, except for that one scene where he played old, old Kim where we were uh, dealing with the embodiment of fear. Do you remember that episode? Uh, what was the name of that episode? It was with Michael McKean was in there. Um, the, the Thaw. 
the thaw, that was the name of it. Um, and so they put probably three and a half hours of uh, prosthetics on me to make me look like a hundred years old. Um, that was that was really that was tough sitting in that makeup chair. I really started to feel for uh, Ethan Phillips, Neelix, and all the. I mean, think about that. Neelix had to go through that makeup every single episode. I remember we were out filming in Bronson Canyon. Uh, we were filming the episode uh, the 37, so the 47. I can't remember 37. the 37. Sorry. Um, with Amelia Earhart, that episode. And um, it was a really hot day, and I just remember all the actors, we were all complaining, we were like, oh, it's so hot, we need an umbrella, we need water, oh, it's hot. And after about half an hour of us complaining, all of a sudden, Ethan Phillips, who plays Neelix, he starts, he goes, shut up, shut up, all of you, shut up. None of you, none of you, a mattress on top of your head. <laughs> and six inches of foam, like, you know, foam, uh, foam prosthetic on his head. And he was right. He was the one that was hot. We were just, you know, come on. And that just goes to show you, it's all perspective. You know what I'm saying? You may think that you're in the worst situation, but there's someone even worse off than you. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. Good lesson for life. Um, yes. Did I watch Star Trek before getting on Voyager? Yes. Um, I have been a science fiction fan since 1977 when I was an eight-year-old watching Star Wars in the movie theater, so the original Star Wars. Um, and then after that, uh, I watched every Star Trek movie that came out, every film. The original series was on syndication when I was a kid. I, I watched some of those episodes, but you know, if you're eight or nine years old, you want you want visual effects. You want you know, so 1966 television visual effects has nothing compared to 1977, 79 visual effects for film. So as a kid, I was really much more into the, 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 uh, the bright lights and different types of cool things that I could see uh, on screen that I saw with, with Star Wars. But, um, but I did follow, I did follow uh, all the feature films, of the Trek films, um, with Voyage Home being probably one of my favorites, I have to say. Uh, I didn't watch, here's my, my deal with Next Gen, some of you, if you were at the TNG 25th anniversary in Calgary, they know this story. I was in college when Next Gen came on, I turned it on, and I was very excited. And it was season one, but the episode was called Code of Honor. Code of Honor has been agreed upon by the writers of Star Trek to be the worst written episode of Star Trek in the history of Star Trek. <laughs> For those of you who don't know what Code of Honor is about, uh, the Next Gen crew encounter a planet of all turban people. Okay, they're all they're all African Americans with turbans on their heads, right? So the away team comes down, and sure enough, the the aliens come over to greet the away team, and the the, the one alien, the lead alien guy, has a box, and he's walking to, towards Picard, and as he walks to Picard, <coughs> and in the box, Tasha Yar grabs this guy's arm and flips him on the floor, right? And he's on the floor, and and he's going, oh, but it was a gift. Like that. And then, you know, Picard goes, uh, sorry, that was my security chief, you know? So he's all trying to explain how she's trying to protect him. And then when the guy hears that the security chief is Tasha Yar, he looks up and he goes, Your security chief is a woman? <laughs> that line made me go, Oh no. <laughs> this is not good. I watched the whole episode, I thought it was absolute poop. And I was very upset. Very upset. But I said, you know what, I'll give it another chance. I'll give it another shot. Six months later, turn on Next Gen. It is a rerun of Code of Honor. <laughs> a year and a half after that, I turn it on. It is yet another rerun of Code of Honor. So then I started thinking, there's something a bit, there's something going on here. A higher power is telling me, do not watch Next Gen. And it actually made sense, because I think if I watched any other episode of Next Gen, I would have been a huge fan of Next Gen, which then would have affected my audition for Voyager. Because then I would have been thinking, oh, we're, the, we're the series that's gonna replace Next Gen, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. But because I wasn't a big Next Gen fan, my Voyager audition wasn't that, mm, not necessarily, important is not the word, but it definitely wasn't, Nervous. Yes, I wasn't as nervous. So I think Code of Honor existed so that I could be in St. Kim. That's, that's, 
Someone actually told me, you should make a Code of Honor t-shirt. I'm like, yeah, that might be kind of funny, actually. Yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, did that answer that question? Who is that? Yeah, okay. Yeah, so, yes? Oh, sorry. You're a huge science fiction buff, right? I am. I've so seen all sci-fi. you sci read a lot of sci-fi as well? Uh, not so much. Not so much reading sci-fi, but more watching sci-fi. So, other than the Star Trek, what's your favorite science fiction movie or a series? Um, and why? And why? Um, I, you know what? I, I really like... Oh God, that is so difficult um, to respond to that. Uh, because, like I said, I, I like I love Star Wars. I love Battlestar Galactica, original and new Battlestar Galactica. Um, I love uh, uh, is it Enemy Mine? Enemy Mine, yeah. Enemy Mine with Louis Gossett Jr. Was um, that was quite one of my favorites. Yeah, wonderful. Um, uh, I used to wish that I could learn the language of the Drac. You know. <laughs> That scene where they go, like, he speaks track! And I was like, kind of cool. Do you speak Klingon? Uh, I do not speak Klingon, but we were talking about this the other day, how I should call Rosetta Stone and pitch that as their new language. <laughs> <laughs> Get Rosetta Stone Klingon. <laughs> so, that would be kind of cool, actually. I think people would buy that. Um, I do not. Other than Kapla, I don't speak much more than that. Yeah. Yes. That's about it. Uh, yes. Okay, you know what, we're going to jump with this gal up here, and then we'll go back there. What's my favorite what? Voyager episode. Favorite Voyager episode is a tie between um, Timeless, which is where the ship crashes into the ice planet, and Kim is still alive, and Chicote is still alive, that one, the 100th episode. And then um, the shoot, where Kim and Paris are on the alien prison ship. And then the other one that ties with that, it's a three-way tie, um, is the pilot episode, Caretaker. Just because that was when we all met. That was our first time meeting. I mean, the, the, the meeting of all the actors on the first episode of Voyager, we were filming for 30 days, and uh, it was just a glorious time meeting everybody, and filming on location. And, and it, was, it was just very exciting, you know, because for me, being a sci-fi fan, I was pinching myself for the whole first year, going, I'm on sci-fi shows, I'm on Star Trek, oh my god, I can't believe it. So it was, it was quite amazing. Um, the, the, the funniest moment from filming Caretaker would have to be when I met uh, Tim Russ for the first time. I walked up to him and I said, Hey, guess what? Change one letter, Tupac. You could have been Tupac. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to make a joke, right? He doesn't laugh at all, right? He just looks at me. With that Vulcan, he really is Vulcan in real life, by the way. He looks at me and he's like, rap music, rap music is a reason for the fall of modern Western civilization. <laughs> I'm waiting for the candid camera to come out and, and say, ha ah, ha, we got you. But no, that's really how he talks, okay? He is Vulcan in real life. And you can tell him I said that. It becomes Edmonton. So, uh, but that was my, my, my dream moment, the funny moment I remember. Yes, towards that. Uh, so I have a last question. Um, you mentioned that if you had it your way, Harry Kim would have done a ship-wide talent competition. Yes. And he would have done his impersonation as well, crew. Yes. Uh, would you do your impersonation of Harry Kim doing his crew impersonation as well? <laughs> 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 Woo! Oh my god. Oh my god. Everybody. Oh my god. I just I just did too long. That was already done. Um, it's funny because there's certain words that that uh, that bring me to their character. Like for instance, if I try to get Tom Paris, I always do that whenever he says yes, ma'am, and he's much more breathy than I am. So he's like yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. So it's almost kind of like he's going through puberty a little bit, right? And the funny thing is that in Germany, when you watch a German episode, the Germans pride themselves on doing German voiceover that are so close to our voice pitches that you know they're, they love being really precise about that. But if you watch a German Voyager, oh my gosh, Ensign Kim is talking in Paris's voice, right? You, literally, you hear Kim, he's like, he's like, yeah, ich habe Kapitän, ich he's like, he's got this voice which is a teenage voice which is breaking, you know, it's coming into manhood. And then you listen to Paris talk, he's like, 
go a couple times. This is, this is really low, you know? So they got it totally reversed, right? Paris is the breathy, really sort of, hey, what's up, guys? You know, I mean, that's how Paris talks, right? Um, the word, the phrase, the common phrase that I usually use to get to Chicote is, uh, he had one line in, a, in an episode where he was, and I get to walk. <laughs> so that's that's my that's how I get to my so I always find one phrase that, and for the doctor it was the one scene where he got his mobile emitter he got that mobile emitter he shows up on the bridge he's all happy he's with Kess and he goes just remember Kess anybody gets the eyes of the bridge but the real action happens in sick day so that was how I would get to my you know my Bob Picardo the doctor just off of that one little phrase there and again Kate has always been. Uh, that is a bug, Mr. Kim. It's always been sort of in the throat. And I remember the first time I did it with her there, she's I don't talk like that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do. No, I don't. Yes, you do. No, I don't. And it was, it was embarrassing, but it was also fun to mess around with Kate that day. But I, that's it. I gotta go, yeah? Am I done? Oh my gosh. Time has gone so quickly. Thank you so much for taking your time. <laughs>